three, two, one. Woo! Hey guys, and welcome back. My name's Elizabeth, and I am sharing information, tips, recipes, encouragement, and lessons from doctors and writers and people who financial experts and people who want to help you live a happier, healthier, and better life. So that is my goal. I am always learning and striving to be better and to take personal responsibility and accountability for my life. And the best way to do that is through learning and then applying what I learn into my own life. So I have learned a lot of lessons. I'm almost 30. I've learned a ton of lessons over the past decade and would love to share them with you in hopes that it could help you um, in your life and in your journey. And I will continually share because I am still learning and consider myself a lifelong learner. So today's segment, we are back with book club. And we have Atomic Habits by James Clear. And we already went over chapter one. So if you have, haven't looked at that video yet, please feel free to go check it out. Um, I'll link it in the description. But we have Atomic Habits and we're going to go through chapter two today. So let's get started. All right. So we have chapter two. It's how your habits shape your identity and vice versa. So this is really helpful to know um, about how your habits shape your identity and how your identity can shape your habits. So we're going to go ahead and start with the lessons. So the first thing that James talks about right away, right off the bat in the chapter is that few things can have more a more powerful impact on your life than improving your daily habits. So this is so true, and you guys are probably like, yeah, that makes sense. But improving your daily habits will help improve your life. So if you are having poor habits, um, not exercising, not eating healthy, etc., then that's going to cause certain results to happen in your life. And vice versa, if you are having all these good habits and are constantly doing good things and reinforcing those things, you're going to reap the rewards of that. So your habits create your destiny and create your life. And that's why it's important to understand how they work and how you can change them. So in this chapter, James talks about how once your habits are established, like all of us have habits right now, it can kind of be hard to change them. And maybe you want to be healthier. You want to start exercising. You want to stop smoking or something, but it's a habit. And so it's really hard to break that. And so we're going to walk through that. Um, and it can feel impossible. He says, we try to change though the wrong thing. And we try to change our habits in the wrong way way. So what does he mean by that? What's the wrong way? What's the right way? Well, James says that one of the best ways to change your habits is with identity. So how many of you like think you're a healthy person? Think you're a smart person? Think you're a reliable person or an organized person? Well, that is an identity and a belief that you have about yourself. And so if you have these beliefs, like that's a good belief that you are healthy or you are reliable or you are intelligent, then you're going to probably have habits that align with that. If I see myself as a healthy person, I think I'm going to try to eat more healthy or drink more water or get to the gym. But if you see yourself maybe as an anxious and unorganized person, then that's going to show up in your life. So he recommends to build identity-based habits because this will help you to stay motivated and to form the right habits. So before I forget, he also talks about there's this three layers of behavior change. So we see that there is identity, processes, and outcomes. So the identity is the inner layer. That's the most critical part. But the outcomes is the first layer, and it's concerned with changing your result, like losing weight, publishing a book, winning a championship. And most of the goals you set are associated with this level of change. The second layer was changing your process, and it's concerned with changing your habits and your systems, implementing a new routine at the gym or decluttering your desk for better workflow, um, 
developing a meditation practice, etc. But the third and deepest la layer is that changing your identity. And it's concerned with changing your beliefs, your worldview, your self image, your judgments about yourself and others. Most of the beliefs, assumptions and biases that you hold are associated with this level. And that's why it's so important to get to the core and to start changing your beliefs. For example, I am healthy. I do what I say. I encourage and empower people. I am peaceful. I am in control. Um, I am successful. So changing those beliefs and your identity and your worldview is critical. So James also talks about that behind every system of actions is a system of beliefs. So it's changing those beliefs. Some of your beliefs are great, but some we can change and some are holding us back. It says changing those underlying beliefs will help us change who we are and how we show up in the world. So we need to change those beliefs. So James also talks about that behind every system of actions is a system of beliefs. So it's changing those beliefs. Some of your beliefs are great, but some we can change and some are holding us back. It says changing those underlying beliefs will help us change who we are and how we show up in the world. So we need to change those beliefs. One of the best ways this works and why this is so powerful is because you take pride in what you are in your identity. So maybe some of those things like that you're a healthy person or you're organized or you're reliable, you take pride in that. And so you want to actually be that person. And even though it might be a struggle, maybe it is hard to get to the gym or those things, you really do want it to happen. You want to be that person. And so it'll be easier to make that change when you really identify with it and you are proud of being that type of person. About this, James says the ultimate form of intrinsic motivation, that's internal motivation, is when a habit becomes a part of your identity. It's one thing to say I'm the type of person who wants this. It's something very different to say I'm the type of person who is this. And that is key and essential in any aspect of your life is to say that you are, even if you're already not, if you're not yet, say that you are and become that person that you're saying. And if you say that you are that, you'll be surprised that the actions you take will start to be that. Ultimately, the more pride that you have in a particular aspect of your identity, the more motivated you will be to maintain those habits. So take pride, find things that you identify with that you really would be proud of, and you will see yourself becoming more successful with those habits. So James also says that improvements are only temporary until they become a part of who you are. So the goal is to become a reader, not to just read the book. It's to become a runner not just run the marathon and to become a musician, not just to learn an instrument. So it's the process of becoming and tell yourself, I want to become this. I am this. This is who I am. Doing the right thing is easy. After all, when your behavior and your identity are fully aligned, you're no longer pursuing behavior change. You are simply acting like the type of person that you already believe yourself to be. So believe yourself to be that person and show up and do what that type of person would do because you are. Another thing I wanted to point out, which is the opposite of this, is that a lot of us have these negative things that we say about ourselves, or these negative identities, like I'm terrible with directions. I'm not a morning person. I'm always late. I'm bad at remembering people's names. He says that people walk through life in a cognitive slumber, by blindly following the norms attached to their identity. So stop identifying yourself with these negative things. Stop telling the story to yourself that you are bad with directions or that you are horrible at math or with technology. Those stories are holding you back because honestly, if you have someone teach you those things, or you take time to learn, you probably aren't going to be that bad. But the story you're telling yourself is keeping you in not being good at directions. So stop telling yourself that story. So in order to make progress, you need to do a lot of unlearning. And I've certainly done that over the last decade of my life is a lot of learning, but also unlearning of things. So becoming the best version of yourself requires you to continuously edit your beliefs and to upgrade and expand your identity. 
Um, if your beliefs and worldview play such an important role in your behavior, where do they come from in the first place? How exactly is your identity formed? And how can you emphasize new aspects of your identity that serve you and gradually erase the pieces that hinder you? So it's all about building that new identity and letting go of the old. Okay, so now you see that identity plays a critical role in forming a habit and helping you to actually stick with it and to become that type of person that you believe you are and to stop, let go of the person that you think you are, that you're really not. So how do we do this? It's a two-step process to changing our identity. So you're not born with a preset um, slew of beliefs. Every belief, including those about yourself, are actually learned and conditioned through your experience. More precisely, your habits are how you embody your identity. When you make your bed each day, you embody the identity of an organized person. When you write each day, you embody the identity of a creative person. When you train each day, you embody the identity of an athletic person. The more you repeat a behavior, the more you reinforce that identity. So you want to reinforce the behavior by repeating it. So in the book, it talks about you only believe this to be true, that you're bad with directions because that's the evidence you have. Maybe you always miss a turn or you go the wrong way or you have to use GPS or you have to have someone else drive or whatever that is, but you only believe that because you have proof of it. So now you need to give yourself proof and evidence that you can make a change. So, of course, your habits are not only actions that influence your identity, but the virtue of their frequency, they are usually the most important ones. So whatever habits you're currently doing the most, the highest frequency, they're usually the most important. Every day we have the opportunity to change. We change bit by bit, day by day, habit by habit. Just like the first chapter says, it's those micro moments, those micro little habits that add up over time, that 1%. Um, and we're continually undergoing these micro evolutions of self. Every action you take is a vote for the type of person that you want to be. So when you think about your habits, think about you're voting for the type of person you want to be. When you get up and you put those running shoes on, you go for a run, you are voting for that person that you want to be. So in order to make a change, you need to decide the type of person you want to be. Who do you want to be right now? We know it's about identity. So, and what goals are you, do you have right now? What do you want to improve? What do you want to change? What identity shift do you need to make to get there? Prove it to yourself in the small wins. So that's the two-step process, is to decide the type of person you wanna be and then prove it with small wins that would line up with that type of person. So in order to make a change, you need to decide the type of person you wanna be. Who do you wanna be right now? We know it's about identity. So, and what goals are you? do you have right now? What do you wanna improve? What do you wanna change? What identity shift do you need to make to get there? Prove it to yourself in the small wins. So that's the two-step process, is to decide the type of person you wanna be and then prove it with small wins that would line up with that type of person. After you figure that out, James says that you have to start taking small steps to reinforce your des desired identity. So you have to take those small steps. He has a great example that says he had a, a friend who lost over 100 pounds by asking herself, what would a healthy person do? So she just would ask herself that. And so then she would start taking actions that healthy people would, and then she lost 100 pounds. So thinking about that, if you want to run a successful business, if you want to um, be a successful engineer or something, what would that type of person do? How would you get that job, etc.? So I hope this has been helpful, but I'm going to leave you with the final closing paragraph and then a little chapter summary for our takeaway and our wrap up. So building better habits isn't about littering your day with life hacks. It's not about flossing one tooth each night or taking cold showers every morning or wearing the same outfit each day. It's not about achieving external measures of success like earning more money, losing weight or reducing stress. Habits can help you achieve all of these things, but fundamentally, they are not about having something. They are about becoming someone. So your habits matter because they can help you become the type of person you wish to be.
So figure out what type of person you wish to be and then what things you have to do in order to become that person and say that you are that person. Start identifying with that person. So chapter summary we have right here. There are three levels of change, outcome change, process change, and identity change. And identity change is the most powerful and that we need to focus on. The most effective way to change your habits is to focus not on what you want to achieve, but on who you wish to to become, okay? Your identity emerges out of your habits. Every action is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. So whoever you want to become, start taking actions that lead to that person. Becoming the best version of yourself requires you to continuously edit your beliefs and to upgrade and expand your identity. So really critically analyze and take a look at yourself and figure out what you need to expand or unlearn and reprogram in your life. The real reason habits matter is not because they can get you better results, although they can do that, but it's because they can change your beliefs about yourself. So Takeaway, stop believing some of these negative things about yourself and start believing in the power of you and who you can be. You are no longer this person that you were. Let that go. Stop believing what other people say. Like probably a lot of other people have told you some of these negative things. And what goal do you want? If you want to do it, claim it and start taking actions like you are already that person because you are. You are a healthy person. You are a successful person. You are a smart person. You are a kind person. Take actions that vote for that type of person. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much. We did our second book club and got through chapter two. Let me know if you want to know more. The next chapter, I believe, is actually going over um, breaking bad habits and creating new ones and how that can help you. So I hope that you're able to identify who you want to be and you can take actions to get there. So thank you so much for being here. Please feel free to like and subscribe and join the community if you want to learn more. Um, I will be posting all sorts of videos, recipes, uh, financial information, personal development, and anything that I think would be helpful to you. And if there is something you think will be helpful or that you want my advice on or you want me to look at a book for, please feel free to drop that in the comments and I'm happy to create a video to share. So have a great day. You've got this. Believe in the person that you already are and that you want to become. You got this. Bye, guys.